here tonight, uh, first order of business will be the invocation and Pledge of Allegiance. I'd like to welcome Marshall Fry. He is the youth pastor at Celebration Church of Philip. If he'll come to the podium and lead us in our invocation. Peter. Pray with me. Heavenly Father, God, just thank you for tonight, Lord. Just thank you for who you are. Thank you for loving us in such an incredible way, God, and, and for showing your love to us, Lord. Father God, I pray right now that your will is done tonight, Lord, that every decision that is made is, Lord, for your will and through, your, and through who you're calling us to be, God. Father God, I just pray for leadership in this room, Lord. I pray for a divine wisdom, God. I pray that through an understanding, Lord, and, and knowledge of who you are, God, that the best decisions are made for you and through you, God. Father God, I pray for a hand of blessing over the city, over all the leadership, God. That, Father God, you use them in miraculous ways, Lord, to further your kingdom. Lord, we love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Pastor Prime. Okay. Do we have any additions to tonight's agenda, Clark? Nothing aware. Okay. All right, Council. First order of business is to approve the minutes of the August 8th special call meeting, uh, the regular city council meeting, work session, and agenda meetings, which were held on August the 12th. Do you have any additions or deletions, changes to those minutes? Okay. If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve as submitted. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. Uh, aye. Aye. Opposed, please say nay. Okay, minutes are approved. Mr. Wilson, your report, please. Thank you, Council President. Sorry, that's... Um, the only thing I was going to talk about um, tonight, um, because it's on uh, the agenda, is um, the veto and kind of put things in, in perspective because this is not about trying to, to have any conflict. It, the reality is, is that, well, I, I prepared this, and it's probably better that I just read it. Um, but I do want to be clear that um, Chief Hollinghead handled everything right. Um, she's just been such a pleasure to work with, and really, I can't tell you, you know, I, I just think the world of her. Um, since her appointment, she has been extremely proactive and um, has addressed so many concerns that honestly, these are not new concerns. They're concerns that have been around for a very long time. So I, I really just can't say enough that she just doesn't ignore things. She takes it and she just moves forward and it, it's been so, so good for Fairhope. Um, with this ordinance, unfortunately, the development and the presentation got off to a little rocky start. Um, and some of the content had to be removed. Um, the process for the development of the ordinance coincided also with um, other priorities that I had to do and prepare during the work sessions. Um, it's not an excuse, but I'm just trying to be honest with, with, with everything. Um, I had other priorities as, as mayor and as a mom, um, including putting together uh, the, the budget, which some of you heard a little bit about that tonight. Um, setting the record straight on a lot of media attention about the health of our bay and uh, my going out of town to move my daughter um, into school. But when the ordinance passed on um, August 12th, I signed it the following day. It's kind of a routine. I'm part of all of these approvals, or at least I'm here. And, and so it's not really, you know, I, I don't do it blindly, but I, I did sign it uh, the next day. Um, but it was after that that I had uh, a lot more, more of a chance, and I think that's when the influx of concerns really started, was the right after it was passed. And I believed it was an unfair law. I really began to reconsider the decision that I had made. So, you know, I think as leaders it's important for us to take time to listen to citizens. Uh, we care about how they feel, um, even if this is a matter of doing better communication and nothing has changed. Um, this step will serve a good purpose. Um, understand that most of the pushback came after August 12th. I also believe it is important for me to admit 
I may have made a hasty decision when signing it the very next day, and I should have taken more time during the process for the discussions when I felt at the time, again, that it was rather routine. The more consideration uh, I gave to the ordinance, the more I realized that there were th things about it that I just couldn't support. And um, I just felt like there, there was a better way to handle the issues and take a little bit more time to develop it. Um, there are cases um, that give good guidance on how to constitutionally structure and apply such an ordinance. Um, this will help our city ordinance if, they're, if it's attacked. Um, I know that ours was developed based on a lot of our neighbors, so I'm not here to talk about specific issues I have legally because I, I don't want to make this about everybody needing to change something. I just think that for Fairhope, um, we can do things di differently. You know, we, we're a caring town and we want to help. Um, I think there could be a provision um, that legally, you know, the, the police prior to an arrest, and, and that's the main thing is the arrest. I just feel like that's extreme. Um, but could, there could be protocols that happen and that that couldn't be, you know, part of a first offense. Um, and then the city could also contribute to possibly taking, if it's a homeless situation, um, taking them to a shelter and, and so forth. We don't have a serious homeless problem, but we do want to make sure that there's things in place where we can help them and we want to give police the tools they need so it, they can do their jobs successfully. So with all that said, I, I'm not here to talk about a lot of the concerns because I do think those need to be addressed with legal and um, I hope that that council will support me because I only want to support the police department uh, specifically the the chief and um, I just know that we can do this in a very positive way so thank you okay. Okay. thank you mayor Wilson next item on tonight's agenda will be public participation pertaining to agenda items only if you would like to um, come before the council uh, and uh, let me say this is going to exclude item number six because that's a public hearing and you would have an opportunity to come up during item number six so if you'd like to speak to the council about items five or seven through 26 please come forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record I'm Jim Peck on 413 Azalea, moved from Fish River last year. Uh, I read the ordinance. I think it needs a lot more work, and I kind of agree with the mayor, but one thing that needs to be recognized is the police jurisdiction, how far that goes. And so if you include the police jurisdiction, you're going all the way to Fish River, 104, and south to Barnhill. So, in, I don't know if y'all are familiar with the map, the police jurisdiction map and the carpet. The carpet, yeah, but back to the drawing board and it's gonna burden the police department to manage and go out to farmland. I mean, I, I used to travel out every day. We've been here since uh, 2012. So recognize that you're putting a burden on the police department by going through police jurisdiction to cover that whole blanket area. <coughs> It's just too much. It's just they couldn't, they can't, can't handle it. I mean, especially when you get on private property. I mean, you know, somebody in private property wants the kids to come out, camp outside, can't do it. If you if you look at it. That's not, that's, 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 that's not accurate. accurate. Well, I just want to, I'm exaggerating, but it's still a, uh, a problem. So I suggest they go back to drawing boards and, and take out the police jurisdiction, do the corporate, and then gradually, over time, work in additional areas, so. All right, thank you. Yes, sir, thank you, Mr. Beck. Anyone else? Well, items five and seven through 26. Okay, I'll close public participation and remind everyone you'll have another opportunity to address council at the conclusion of tonight's meeting. Next item will be council comments. 
Councilman Robinson? Uh, I don't have any comments right now. Thank you. Did I throw you off going back to you first this you week? Did not, I was <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Conyers? I have no comments tonight. Okay. <laughs> Councilman Brown? Yeah, I just want to remind everybody about the uh, special tax district referendum that's coming up September 17th. Uh, there will be a public forum at the Fairhope Public Library on September 5th from 5.30 to 6.30. Bring your questions and concerns to be discussed. That's it. Councilman Boone? Yeah, I'd like to yield my time to uh, Mr. Mark Pelosi with the Fairhope Police Department for some comments he has. Maybe the fire department? Uh, yeah, fire department. I'm sorry. I know he's active, but I didn't know he was both. <laughs> hey, if you need him, he'll be there. Thank you for yielding your time. Uh, I just wanted to go on the record. Uh, in the previous work session, it was mentioned that we did not turn over a copy of our financials uh, for the Fair Volunteer Fire Department. We did turn over a copy of 2016, 17, and 18 tax returns, which is our obligation to do so when requested. So we did comply with that. And in addition, uh, last Tuesday, I did schedule a meeting uh, with the mayor. I had the opportunity to meet with uh, the financial director and the treasurer, uh, but at the meeting, the mayor did not attend. So I just want to make sure everybody was clear that we did see through to our obligations. I want to respond to that. Um, the meeting wasn't... Was it with me because I was out of town and Gail wouldn't schedule something when I'm out of town moving my daughter. And financials do include financials. I mean, the tax returns are, are helpful, but financials weren't included so that's really the only thing that we can go by when looking at and planning with y'all how we can afford all the things that were put in the budget so um, I did reach out to you and I said thank you for the tax returns but I needed um, the, the financials and I won't read your response but um, you, you did mention that you know you had to go and get approval for that and I just I didn't see why an approval would be, be needed for financials. And th these are supposed to be audited. That's not really my job, but I, the financials are really the only thing that we can look at when looking at how we can do long-term planning. And that's what it's going to take uh, for the fire department because there are so many needs. And the budget, the city budget now is self-sustaining and anything over and these are dollars we're talking about now, not millions. These are in the dollars. Um, you know, there, there's other critical things that have to be cut within the city. And it's difficult because there was a million dollars, additional million dollars in the budget um, from the, the fire department. So am I permitted to reply to that comment? Yeah, I'll give you another minute. Thank you, sir. Uh, I did delay my work schedule, and I got an email from Gail. And my request to you was to meet with you. I'm not going to go back and forth on that. One. Second, our obligation as a nonprofit organization is to turn over our tax returns. I made an attempt to sit down with you to discuss financials, but being a uh, organization that works off of uh, parliamentary procedure, if I'm not required to turn something over, I'm not about to offer it up without consulting with our uh, fire department members. Uh, I don't feel I'd be doing justice to the fire department without discussing our business with them and also us being a separate corporation. So okay. it's just how I wanted to clear the air. Thank if there's you. any other questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Yes, sir. Thank you for your time. Councilman Boone, I appreciate it. No problem. Councilman Boone, any more comments? Nope, that's it. Okay, I have no comments tonight. We'll move into item number five, which is concerning the mayor's veto of ordinance number 1653, an ordinance to establish an adopt policy and procedure for sleeping in vehicles out of doors or in non-residential zones. Uh, in uh, your books or on your iPads, you do have the letter uh, from the mayor. It's exercising her right to veto number 1653. Uh, and it says the way it was written concerns me and think the city of Fairhope can do better to address the city's concerns and help those in need with better resources. And there are a couple of more small paragraphs in there if you'd like to read them. So, um, council, uh, you can let the veto lie. This is your options. You can uh, take no action and the uh, veto will take effect or someone can make a motion to override the veto. I make a motion we override the veto. Okay, I have a motion to override the veto. Do I have a second? Second. 
I have a motion and a second. Discussion? I think there are some things that can be improved on, uh, you know, possibly pulling back to the corporate limits. But as it's written, uh, I've been told it needs to be passed, and then we can correct it as we go. Any other comments? Yeah, I do. Um, I'm looking for Lieutenant Hamrick. I saw him standing back there. Um, uh, my question would be for the police department. Uh, I, I'm sorry. Um, my, my question would be is, is what is the police department's feeling, uh, and I hate to put you on the spot, I don't know might be the, the answer here is what their feeling would be on pulling this, this particular ordinance back to the police or to the city corporate limits. You know, and, and to discuss some of this, you know, I think the way uh, it, it's being reported is it appears that Fairhope has created this ordinance to target whoever. But, but in reality, Fairhope is not the, it is not created anything. We are following in line with what other local municipalities have already done. Is that correct? Thank you, Lieutenant Hamrick. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I understand the mayor's position on it, and, and, I, and I think, based on what I've read and what she said tonight, I think her concerns are reasonable. I think whenever there is something new that's done, uh, there's always some, some apprehension on the front end because you don't quite know how it's going to be applied and, and how it's going to impact our community. But in my personal opinion, whenever it comes uh, to dealing with the safety of our community, my practice has always been to place our trust or place my trust in our police department and based on their recommendation. And, and from what I understand, their recommendation is to move forward with the ordinance as written. Um, and I do trust the police department both in their recommendation and in their ability to enforce this um, in, in a way that will better serve the entire community. I've heard the concerns um, for those who don't want the ordinance passed or that want the veto to, to stand. Um, and in most of the people that I've talked to, there is some general confusion as to how it is written, what it applies to, and how it will be enforced. Um, and, and for most of those that I've spoken to about it, when the, when the discussion was over, uh, some of their concerns, maybe not all, were resolved. Um, and so, uh, in my personal opinion, um, I, I'm, I support our, our police and, and what they think is in the best interest of the safety of our community as a whole. And that's why I think, I, I think the ordinance should stand as written. There, and I'll say this. Nothing's perfect. It never is. Uh, changes can always be made. And if we decide that this that this ordinance, as written, needs work um, or is unfair in any way, I'll be the first to raise it at a meeting and get it repealed or to get it modified in a way that I think better serves our community. But I'd like to give our police the opportunity to police our community um, and protect the community as a whole. Any further comments? I guess I'd just say that I think um, I have a lot of faith in Chief Hollinghead, the rest of the men and women at the police department. I think they're very community-oriented, and I feel like they will use discretion, and, and this is something they've asked for. Um, 
feel like we should proceed as as it was originally presented. Okay. Just kind of echo the other sentiments of the other council members here is that I I, I too feel like the police will use uh, their discretion. Uh, you know, I, I don't envision people going to jail that don't deserve to go to jail. In the, in the code of our, of our, our in our laws, there's, there's, there can be a fine all the way up to jail time in almost every law that's on the books. And it doesn't mean that you go to jail. If you're, if you're caught speeding doing 26 miles an hour at 25, I doubt any of you, you know, that the police have ever pulled you over, much less given you a ticket, fined you, or arrested you. And I think that they'll use the same uh, jurisdiction here. Uh, I've also, over the past many years, uh, heard overwhelmingly that the police uh, want to enforce our laws in our police jurisdiction as well as our city limits because we, our city limits gerrymander into a lot of different places and we have a lot of pockets of unincorporated areas and some of those pockets are islands within our corporate limits and you wouldn't want to exclude that from, from the law so I think that you must keep it within the within the police jurisdiction, and I hear you, uh, the citizen that was concerned about that, but that's the things that I think of when I think about how you have to enforce it in the jurisdiction. But, you know, if you're out in the county, I think that if somebody's out there sleeping somewhere where they, you know, someone may think they're not, I think that they're going to be asked by the, by the police uh, what they're doing, and if they have a pretty good answer, they're probably going to be left alone. And uh, same can be said for the other parts of that. Uh, I have spoken to the police department. I've spoken to Chief Hollinghead, and and she uh, echoed to me uh, that she was in favor of keeping the ordinance as is. And Jay, I, you can't say you're going to be first to, to change it because I said that last meeting, so we have to we'll have to erase that. But uh, I agree with you 100 percent. If there's a need to change that, uh, <coughs> I think that we would. And nothing is ever perfect, but we can edit as we need. Any other discussion? Okay, hearing no other discussion, do we need a roll call vote, clerk? Probably wouldn't hurt. Okay, I'll call the question. Council President? Aye. Place two? Aye. Place three? Aye. Place four? Aye. Place five? Aye. Okay. Motion carries and uh, veto is overridden. Thank you, Council. Item six is a public hearing. This is an ordinance to amend zoning ordinance number 1253, a request to rezone the property of the Fairhope Single Tax Corporation and Provision Investments, LLC, from R2 Medium Density Single Family Residential District to B4 Business and Professional District. This property is generally located at 9979 Windmill Road, containing 1.4 acres, 48 acres more or less. Mike. Good evening, Council, Council President, Mayor. Thank you for having me this evening. Uh, as you said, this is a rezoning case um, for the property located at 9979 Windmill Road. Uh, my name is Mike Jeffries, working the planning and zoning department as a city planner. Uh, this property, we have some slides, if Joe can get those running for me. Next slide. Uh, up on the screen on the left is our uh, traditional zoning map. Um, the property outlined in black with an arrow pointed from subject property is currently zoned R2. It is uh, surrounded on two sides by residential agricultural property. On the east is a currently zoned B4, which is business and professional district. To the south uh, is a planned unit development. Uh, the large portion that fronts on windmill and 181, part of that put is a um, for business and office use. On the right is an older aerial showing structures that are still on the property. Uh, the property is currently vacant and has no structures on it at all right now. As we said, it's a public hearing for provision investments who is the owner uh, we have with us se civil david deal can answer any questions that staff that you may have that staff uh, may not be able to answer it says on the northwest corner of 181 and windmill road we went over the surrounding properties uh, zoned ra pud b4 uh, there's a few other zones around it that are R2 and R1 that are in the general vicinity. And the southeast corner um, from across the street is all predominantly unzoned, unincorporated uh, Baldwin County. There's currently Bill E's restaurant is on the corner there. So the uses there can, can range and can change in the future uh, depending on the intent for the owners there. 
there's just some of the, the use table right out of the zoning ordinance with the B4 allowed uses. Uh, I just want to point out this is a significant less allowable use than what a B1 um, use would be. This is more or less geared towards a, an office type use, not your retail, grocery store type of establishment. Were there any conditions placed on the recommendation by staff or by the Planning Commission? No, sir. Next slide. That's just a view of the subject property showing it's vacant of any type of property. And staff's recommendation is approval for the rezoning for R2 medium density single family residential to B4 business and professional district. Uh, the Planning Commission recommended approval as well at their July 1st regular meeting uh, to rezone it from R2 to B4. Uh, staff would be happy to answer any other questions council may have. As I said, David Deal with SE Civil is with us tonight, uh, can answer any questions as well. Okay. Somebody would like to introduce the ordinance? I'll introduce the ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Councilman Conyers. <laughs> I'll open up the public hearing. If you would like to speak to this rezoning request, if you'll come to the podium and state your name and address for the record, please. Okay, I will close the public hearing. Council, do you have any questions at this time for staff or for the engineer who's here? Okay, if not, I will let this lay over for final consideration at the next council meeting. Item number seven is final adoption of an ordinance to repeal and replace ordinance number 1357, ordinance number 1380, and ordinance number 1499 and to establish the City of Fairhope Museum Advisory Board and Bylaws of the Fairhope Museum of History. History. This was introduced at the August 12th City Council meeting. Does anybody, uh, do they want a quick review of this? It was just basically cleaning up uh, their rules, the bylaws. I don't think there was anything too controversial about that. Can I introduce a motion for final adoption then? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second for final adoption. Any further discussion? Okay, Clark, will you call the question? Council President. Aye. Place two. Aye. Place three. Aye. Place four. Aye. Place five. Aye. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item eight is an ordinance to amend ordinance number 1631 to extend the moratorium on the filing of rezoning, site plan approval, and multiple occupancy project applications within the corporate limits of the City of Fairhope through and including December 31st, 2019. And, Mr. King. And uh, thank you, Council President. Council members, just a very brief explanation for this, uh, for this ordinance, for the extension of the existing moratorium. As the Council and staff and public are aware, uh, staff is working on a Greeno Road corridor overlay series of districts, and that is working its way through the Planning Commission at this time. Uh, the Planning Commission will have a special meeting just for the corridor overlay districts on September 10th. And this is basically, from a timing standpoint, the, uh, the earliest the Planning Commission could consider, and that is vote on that Greeno Road corridor overlay would be the October Planning Commission meeting. I believe that's October 7th. Uh, the existing moratorium will expire October 1st, so this is a, an extension so that the way the moratorium can remain in place up until the end of this calendar year to give the opportunity for the council to consider the Green Road Corridor Overlay District, which is an amendment to the zoning ordinance that allow the council the opportunity to consider it before, um, before it expires by virtue of extension. And I'm happy to answer questions. Okay. Council, I'll just uh, point out that our next council meeting is on September the 9th, which would be, uh, which what? Yeah, plenty of time for you to look at it, think about it, but also prior to the, the uh, Planning Commission meeting, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, exactly. Exactly. Okay. Council, I would uh, recommend that we let this lie over until the next meeting. Let somebody introduce it, though. Thank you, Clerk. I'll introduce the ordinance. Okay. Thank you, Jimmy. Thank you, Council. Okay. If I hear no action, let it lie over. Thank you. Okay, 
Agenda item number nine is an ordinance to amend ordinance number 953 and to repeal and replace ordinance number 675, 715, 1411, 1422, and amend chapter 21, article 4, sewer, replacing section 2152, connection requirements and connection fees. And I'll just quickly state that this was all discussed at the work session meeting prior to the prior council meeting. Uh, would y'all like to hear from Mr. Peterson? Somebody like to introduce the ordinance? I'll introduce it. Okay. Well, this has been introduced. Councilman Brown, would you like any type of overview? Uh, if not, we'll, we can let this lay over to the next meeting as well. Okay. All right. Hearing no further action, we'll let that lie over to the next council meeting. Item number 10 is an ordinance to amend ordinance number 953. Repeat. And replace ordinance 675, 1196, and 1217, and amend chapter 21, article 3 on water, replacing section 21 32 on connection fees and expenses. Would somebody like to introduce this ordinance? I'll introduce it. All right. Councilman Boone getting in on the action tonight. Does anybody like Mr. Peterson to review these changes? Okay. Hearing no one. Uh, if I don't hear any further action, we'll let this lie over to the next council meeting. Okay, we'll move on to item 11, which is an ordinance to establish monthly salaries for the mayor and council members. In the City of Fairhope Code of Ordinance Section 2-21. And you'll see in your books uh, that it would establish the mayor's pay at uh, $85,000 annually. And the... Uh, Compensation for each council member would be $12,000 annually uh, with the council president uh, making $13,200 payable in equal monthly installments. Also keeps your uh, insurance, the insurance coverage that, that we now have the same for the next uh, incoming uh, government. Mr. Conyers, would you like to speak on this? Um, just uh, just to say that I did do, and unfortunately I didn't bring it with me, but I did do a fairly extensive um, survey of, of surrounding municipalities and municipalities across Alabama just to get an, an idea of what they were um, paying the mayor. That's primarily what was driving it. Felt that uh, 32 fours not really um, an acceptable salary. So. Um, Obviously, that was on the low end of things, and at the same time, the council was uh, fairly on the low end of things as well. So, um, since we were coming up with a, a salary that we felt was um, more more in line with the duties and expectations of, of the mayor of Fairhope, the position is not a full time position, but it is a full time position. I think Mayor Wilson would certainly. Um, yeah, I don't know anybody that said that it's not a full time position, but. Um, I do want to add a comment too that that um, the it, will there be a provision that says that with this salary that there wouldn't be a superintendent of um, utilities? I don't think we can speak that, that, that we, we can't take action on that for which the next future council, council could to. take action on. But that's compensation for the mayor, though, isn't it? It it, uh, it would be compensation for whoever is appointed. That is, the mayor could be appointed for that position. So that has nothing to do with. We no, can't. Sit, I don't it's know not something you do then. No, you don't have to do it six months prior okay. to the election like you do this. You actually have to do it after, I think. Because that, that's what. Can, can I mean, work. my fear is that that will go to the mayor, and then we won't have that person that's really needed over the utilities. I know that's if that's not your decision. That I understand it, but. I think. It, yeah, I mean, I don't think it's our decision now. I think it's it could be changed by whoever. Right. You make it a point of position. Okay. Uh, I'll uh, ask someone to introduce this ordinance. I'll introduce it. Okay. Any more discussion? We'll let this lay over to the next council meeting. Okay. We'll move on to item 12, which is an ordinance to establish and adopt Fairhope Public Utilities electric service standards with the service territory of the city of Fairhope. Would somebody like to introduce this ordinance? I'll introduce the ordinance. Okay, thank you. Mike? 
Mayor, Council. Council it's Council. easy to remember their names now. Everybody in the electric department is a, an officer's name, Mike. <laughs> Pretty much. So this is uh, to establish an electric service standards for the just for the electric service territory of the city of Fairhope. Um, basically, going over how we want services constructed, um, aid to construction costs, and anything that would affect you know the residential commercial building within the city from an electric standpoint. So I'm here if anybody has any questions. I think we went over this at the last work session. So. Okay. Any questions? Okay, we'll let this lie over until the next meeting. Thank you, Pastor. We'll if we need to. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 13 is a resolution the City Council hereby authorizes Mayor Karen Wilson to execute a letter of agreement for 311 service between the City of Fair Open and AT&T for a 311 dialing service. I, I believe, uh, and there are other uh, companies, pretty much all of the um, phone providers we have contracts, similar contracts with, is that correct, Mayor? Um, this is different. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, so for a couple council meetings ago, we had, uh, it was uh, T-Mobile and Verizon, we signed uh, or had a contract before you to uh, establish 311 connectivity to us. This is just AT&T's um, contract. So basically all AT&T customers, after this is signed, will be able to dial 311 and uh, within, within, the, within Fairhope and get to, um, to, to reach our um, city operators. This is the same things at Verizon and T-Mobile that was a couple weeks ago. So in other words, all of them. All right, so it's we'll have all finish, three now. It's just to finish all services. That's exactly it. These uh, these costs in here, these non-recurring charges, is there a pay per there, subscriber charge after that? I, I think they have two versions: one that's paid and one that's free. And I just yeah, well, we're not you doing the one that has charges. I don't know what the really the difference was, but um, but there's no fees for this service. Can you explain to us exactly what the three one one does? All right, so uh, from any cell phone device or any really any telephone, if you dial 311, instead of having to remember or look up a number for the city, you could just dial 311 and reach a city operator. So instead of having to, like if you have a gas outage or, a, or, a, or trash didn't get picked up, you don't have to go to our website, try to figure out what number to call. You just know to call 311 and you'll, you could report that uh, issue through that number, which makes it easier for the citizen to, to reach us. And we'll be using that in conjunction with that QSIN software that was approved the last That's meeting. That's what I was going to ask you about. They'll work together. Will they be merged together? Yeah. Okay. okay. Any questions for Jeff, Council? I'll entertain a motion authorizing Mayor Wilson to execute the letter of agreement. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Item 14 is a resolution the City Council hereby adopts a transportation plan pursuant to the Rebuild Alabama Act. The anticipated allocation from the Rebuild Act fund for the first fiscal year will be approximately $70,360. We did, sorry, we didn't have the agenda meeting earlier, so who can speak to that? Richard, okay. I don't want to throw our folks at the state under the bus, but they have been giving us a lot of things to do without much warning. Uh, part of the receipt of this additional gas tax that we will get some portion back of, and, and there's an, uh, a table in there that shows you what the next three years looks like. We had to have in place and passed by the 31st of this month, and we only found out maybe a week ago about this, uh, maybe a little bit before that. And so what, what we did to, to get us to the position uh, in Public Works, we have been maintaining a list of roads that have been inspected, graded, and evaluated, and trying to put that in our paving plan that's in, attached in there with a schematic of what we, our goal is on an annual basis for the next four years. Uh, so we, we, the, the key element here is we have to say that, hey, here are the roads that need, need maintenance resurfacing, and we will use this gas tax on 
those roads as that dollars come in and uh, which is kind of unique we get gas tax dollars already but we we're told that it can be used for the variety of, of road maintenance but we don't have to tell them specifically what road it is in this case we're, we're providing a list passing a resolution so we meet that requirement that is due by the 31st so basically this color coded list is our plan that, that that's our plan that's our master's resurfacing list at this point in time and as we noted uh, in the resolution that that we will bring that list back to you at least on an annual basis or an as needed basis to add an update okay. and I see the amounts for uh, the second and third years as well yes. it does go up those are going to probably change based on the next census right it'll, it'll only go up right yeah. okay let's say about a 30% increase just based on our population alone. At least 30%. Okay, Council, I'll entertain a motion. Fastest uh, transportation plan pursuant to the Rebuild Alabama Act. So moved. Second. I right, have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Thank you, Richard. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. <clears throat> Item 15 is a resolution the City Council authorizes the submission of an FY28 trip to grant to ALDOT requesting grant funds for the construction of the additional left turn lanes to County Road 44 at the intersection with Green O Road and authorizes the mayor to sign all required grant application documents on behalf of the city. Uh, the grant is being submitted as an 80-20 match with an estimated project cost and I'm going to tell you that you were handed an updated uh, resolution so on tonight's agenda you see 997-915 and it should be $1,095,228.63. So that's up by about, uh, call it 98,000. Uh, the 80-20 match is still intact with some of those numbers have changed slightly. And also on that resolution that was on printed on the agenda, the design fees, uh, add <clears throat> a digit was added. That should not have been 937,313. It should be 97,000. 313. Or did I just say the same thing? Shouldn't have been 937, 313. Any questions? Mr. Johnson. And we kind of covered this in the work session uh, two weeks ago, but this is, uh, we get one ask per year. This is part of the gas tax, uh, some money coming back to help improve roads associated with state roads within our, in our, our city. And there is, as we discussed last time, y'all indicated your willingness to do a 20%. And, and what happened is, is, is like many other grants, when the original was written, the, the engineering cost up front was pulled out as being ineligible. It can be included in the total. So that's why those numbers change. And actually, the, the numbers we're suggesting uh, is uh, uh, our 20% match for the total project is 219.45.73 which is actually a little bit less than uh, what the original uh, resolution that you saw was in there because it had backed out the, the preliminary engineering as not being included in the total project and being 100% cost to the city. And we did note that we would, the one ineligible cost is any utility relocates. We have a placeholder of 50,000. Hopefully that's not gonna be a, a, real, uh, a real hard cost because we can self perform those locates if there are utilities. And if any of you have ever tried to turn left there when it's busy, you know this is badly needed. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Council, I'll entertain a motion to authorize submission of the grant. So moved. So we have a second? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of submitting the grant application, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 16 is a resolution of City of Fair Hope hereby terminates contract extension number two titled Tree Trimming Services 2017, 2017 between the City of Fair Hope and Burford's Tree Incorporated due to failure to perform to the standards of the contract. Uh, so they defaulted and notice has been given. Hello, Mayor, Council again. Um, yeah, Burford is our tree trimming service. Um, we've had several issues with them this year as far as not providing the two, two crews that were required by the contract. Um, we met with them, um, just us and their local supervisor, and tried to encourage them to hire some more people. That didn't work. Um, we had the city attorney send them a letter back in late June 
um, stating that they were not in adherence to their contract and that we were considering doing this. Um, I had my guys out, you know, as they were driving, looking, and to this date, we're still only getting about four people per week on the contract, and it does require five. Um, so we haven't been able to split them into two crews to cover our service territory. Um, we've had a few issues with trees causing outages and interruptions. So I would like to ask that we terminate this contract and go out for bid um, to get a different company in here. You'll be able to cover it in the meantime? Um, we can trim some of them, um, but they're not really doing a lot of trimming for us right now. So. Right. All right, Council. You've heard Mike. I'll entertain a motion to terminate the contract. So, so moved. Second. second. Right. Have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, please say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank, thank you. you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Item number 17 is a resolution the governing body of the city of Fairhope hereby rejects bid number 030-19 for the Fairhope Docks Bulkhead Improvement Project for the Public Works Department and authorizes the city to negotiate a contract with the one bidder pursuant to the Code of Alabama. Mr. Johnson. Yes, sir. Just simply put is uh, we had a, a pretty hard budget number that was approved uh, for this year's budget. Uh, the, we were ambitious in what we were trying to get uh, accomplished. Uh, the, the, the bid price came in higher. We'd like the opportunity to go back and see if we can uh, gleam as much value and get that number uh, closer or exactly or under the approved budget amount. You'll get that uh, back to council. We, we'll have another bite at the apple, right? Yes, sir. Once you negotiate that. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Council, any questions for Mr. Johnson? Okay. I'll entertain a motion to reject the bid. So moved. Second. second. <coughs> I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 18 is a resolution to award the bid for Bayou Drive, Fairway Boulevard, and Fairhope Avenue Transmission System Part 2 for the Sewer Department to bone contracting with a total bid proposal of $2,149,421.08. Mr. Peterson, I might have to get you to explain that one quickly. I don't want Robert to vote on $2.1 million without knowing. That's one of the reasons we wanted to raise the connection fees. Okay. You need, if you think we need it, just see item 18, right? Yes, sir. You know, we had a capacity study done, and the capacity, this, this particular transmission project will serve the system east of Greeno Road from about 104 to Twin Beach. And when you look at the growth projections, when you look at the capacity of some of the systems we already have out there that are somewhat overloaded, uh, in order to upgrade the capacity of the lift stations that feed that particular part of the transmission system, I'm afraid we'd just be putting overflow conditions from where they are now potentially to further down toward the bottom of Fairhope Drive at Bayou or at Fairwood intersection. And I believe this was this is uh, phase two of that. I think it was the four or five. There were five projects involved. Five, right. the, the Church Street outfall is the other one that's coming from the south part of the system. Uh, but that we're just trying to get plans now finalized to go out for bid with that project. We're adding a lot of drainage to that project. We're adding a lot of other utility work with uh, improving the water system along Church Street. We're starting our cast iron gas main replacement program with, with, a, with a full length of uh, polyethylene pipe so that we can start feeding both west and east with replacing cast iron gas as we continue to move out from that what would be our central feed for that system to, to start to migrate out to replace all the cast iron. We got two, two more questions. Uh, one maybe uh, for Ms. Creech. Uh, Ms. Creech, and how is this, uh, how is this going to be paid for? It's in the it's in the budget of um, actually doing a loan 
as part of this five-year plan there's there's some pieces that will be able to pay for itself and I believe the water I have to look back at the sewer um, some of the sewer will be able to pay it was electric some of the um, things in the electric department that's part of that five-year plan upgrades so once we get into the budget <coughs> discussions we can look at um, how y'all want to use fund balance or do you want to go ahead and borrow the money um, those are just discussions that we're going to need to determine you know, how we yeah, want to I move think forward. we're going to have to determine how we're going to pay for this yeah. in the 2019 budget it was also printed the the funds that are on each utility the electric fund was always depleted because it paid for most of the city operating expense so we don't really want to go backwards and make all the utilities pay their share we, you could consider using you know of doing a transfer from one of the more the, the funds that have the funds they need because the profit can pay for these others that have more in their fund as the as you go so and, and that was explained in in last budget so it's still the same thing that can be done but having a line of credit while the interest rates are low I mean I think it should be planned ahead of time yeah. and, and that's an option for to be able to have a line of credit and the, the interest rate is running about 3.35 and then you can look at you know just to be able to get the project done and at the end you can determine if you want to do a long long-term um, loan you know because we are doing 40-year 40 40-year 40 infrastructure so I mean it's as as the council you're going to have to figure out on this infrastructure um, what I see you can't cash flow it throughout as much infrastructure you're trying to do in total um, I know we're starting year four of this plan well, of the five-year plan really about one and a half year one one. And a half. but in total in this <laughs> this whole utility plan that I've seen it's 31 million dollars so you're trying to look at 31 million dollars trying to cash flow that in the next five years it's very difficult so it's a matter of trying to figure out what, what are you wanting to do um, and I could see if you could be able to do a line of credit or short term from a local bank and then do you want to go to market do you want to go to local banks to see what dollar amount and there's some parts that um, like gas gas has more cash than electric and so and that's what the mayor's talking about is to be able to move three million dollars from gas and put it into electric and then we just need to be able to see you know there's a piece of the infrastructure that needs to be done that's in the plan for water 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 has the funding um, sewer you know it's, it's it's not there so um, being putting in 40-year infrastructure looking at the interest rates for borrowing the money you know it's gonna make sense or I don't know you know this man's gonna know um, of some of the sewer can you wait that's his well, that's his question I would just say if I thought we could wait we wouldn't be having this discussion right no, now, you cannot yeah. wait. now and, and let me be clear about this we we're just starting you know and, and as I'll quote councilman Robinson there may be apprehension about what we're doing but but we have professionals that are looking at this and maybe we should trust their judgment I don't have apprehension about this. What I what I I, I do want to ask one more question, and and, and that is that, uh, as I understood it, we were going to be receiving ten or eleven million dollars in Restore Act funds. If we no, spend that, the money before we get the funds, that, will we be reimbursed, or are no, we? No, that's all rehabilitation work. The, the Restore Act has nothing to do with upgrading the transmission work. Okay, so you're understand. saying this is new capacity? Yeah, yes, absolutely. I'm going back about two years ago, but I want to say at the time I was thinking it looked like to, to properly cash flow this, it looked like we needed about a $10 million, eight to $10 million line of credit and that, that could get us through, I thought the, the funding of this, that plus our, our cash, if it, um, if the profits continued to be in line with what, what we're estimating them to be, it seemed like that was about the, 
the shortfall well, and, on and cash flow we're going to have. Part of that is, you know, maybe looking at raising rates, and that was looked at a couple of years ago as well, and, and we decided not to do that then. But that, that still, I think, is something that we have to look at as well. Because, you know, we're still needing some additional staff, and, and we can look at outsourcing types of things that we're doing. But when you have the Royal Lift Station alarm at midnight uh, Saturday night, or I'm sorry, it was Sunday night and, and working from midnight until 7 o'clock this morning. To try, you don't outsource that. But when you don't have but a, a skeleton crew, when, when those people leave at 8 o'clock in the morning because they're worn out from working all night, you, you don't have anybody to support other issues that come up. So you have to have uh, the ability to respond to issues with enough staff to do that. And right now, I don't think any department is set up that way, especially when you look at a, a utility system that emergencies can come 24-7. I mean, you just can't predict when those things will occur. And, and you know, and the mayor's disappointed at me now because I didn't put enough people into the budget for trying to create the kind of staff we need. I know we've looked at organization charts. We've talked about whether we need to have this or that or the other, and we, we've talked about Auburn being a, you know, a, a third-party entity that can look at what we are and who we are and, and where we should be and agree with, you know, what we're doing to, to staff and, and to, to match salaries so that we can be, uh, you know, what I would like to say is a professional organization if that's what we want our utilities to be. And, I mean, I, it's hard for me to continue to track along this process of improving these utilities. And really, if you have a different opinion about what we want Fairhope to be, I'm, I'm thinking we want Fairhope to be the best we can be. And I think that's the goal we should have every day. But, you know, if we're going to continue to back up on occasion because we don't have the money or because we, we, we don't want to you know, have long-term cost for labor that takes to run these things, then maybe we need to establish what our goal is. And then and once we establish a goal, then we can start looking at how we're going to follow that goal and whether we're going to be reporting overflows for the next 10 years versus maybe just the next couple. And, 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 and we can decide that, and we can talk about it. But, but right now, we, we've got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Well, Council, I... I I certainly want to award the bid, but I am still unclear as to how we, we pass this. I'm unclear how this is going to be funded. And, and, and I have to go back to what Kim said earlier. I mean, this is a 40-year investment, and I don't know anybody that, that buys a house with cash, you know, generally speaking. <coughs> some people are able to do that, but, but it's an investment, and you have to figure that you have to have some type of financing to accomplish that. And, and these connection fees, you know, we're looking at maybe gaining another $350,000 a year. Well, I don't know what the debt service for $350,000 a year could be, but, but that is part of the answer. But in order to be able to do that, you have to have the money up front. Which some of the money some that we, we don't have any, we're not transferring money to the city. The city, got the general government has no debt. The utilities, have, we've been paying off debt rapidly. Some money has got to be starting to be freed up somewhere so all i'm saying is mm -hmm. not saying i want to pay for it but but as i sit here right now i don't know how it's going to be paid for so i'm wondering if we need to you know maybe just add something to the resolution that says you know that payment terms will be decided by council and, and quickly i mean we need to do it quickly but well, I mean, we may not even be able to wait until we pass the budget we might want to pull it out of the budget and uh look at how we're going to fund this well i don't know that it's in the budget Part of it is, and um, that's going to be the important piece if we can get that piece of the budget, sit down and look at, you know, because I need direction. Um, but it is in the it is in the budget to to borrow funding for us to balance that budget, or if you are deciding that you want to use fund balance, we need to know that for these type of projects. And I will say that this is, it's not like we're in a rush. We have been talking about this since 2017. I mean, that, there really hasn't been a lot that's changed. We've talked about the five-year plan. We've talked about the estimates and the forecasting of profits, knowing that some of the funds are 
not as equitable because of the different operating expenses paid for the city. I mean, all of this has been discussed and it's been included in all of the, the budgets. The original budget in 2017 included borrowing all of the money. <laughs> you know, it was just basically saying that we have to do something. You know, and, and in that 2017 budget, it had the payments in that budget and it was taken out. So. I don't see how we can continue arguing how are we going to pay for it. We've been putting in the budget every single year how to pay for it's it. It's never, but it's not been, none of that's been adopted. All I'm trying to say I know is it's not been adopted, but all, that's, Mayor, it, it can't is, be ignored anymore. Mayor, all I'm saying is, and we're in council discussion right now, is that we need to come up with the way. Nobody's arguing against the need. We're just simply trying to say we need to figure out, rather than throwing out floating ideas, how we're going to pay for it. I think we get a line of credit and I think we can hash out the amount that we put out for, for bid and in the budget discussion. We can analyze what that what that needs going to be over the next four or five years. Yeah, I, I would like to put all available cash out before we start borrowing, yeah. borrowing money. Well, but if you have a line of credit, then that you have that in true. place and That's then true. you do the cash until you're depleted and then right. you but, tap but the line of credit. But I will say depleting all your reserves does give you a little bit of risk for right what may be a storm event and, and it may hurt a little bit of what your bond or credit rating would be in terms of interest rates when you that's do true. go no, and that's, I'm that's why you get the line first and, and i'm no and i'm no banker that i apologize to <laughs> <interfere> <laughs> with Mr. Tiger. No, no. Well, well, well i, I mentioned too that now that she's negotiated 2.25 percent on our reserves this interest rate is 3.25 three five for the line of credit so i mean it's it's it it's a good uh, it, just just having that line and, and and still keeping some of the reserves. If we're not transferring money to the general government, we should have some funds available in utilities. We have a lot I'm more just trying than to normal. say that whether we take 200,000, 600,000, it's still got to be decided. It's not being decided now because there's no plan on paper. Wh whatever it is has to be decided. No, the plan has that been that on much. paper every single it's budget. It's not adopted, Mayor. I know, but, but, but you say you don't have a plan. The plan has been in the budget every single year. Y'all have not adopted it, but it has been in the budget. In, in the middle of y'all's um, budget packets, when you have time to, to look at it, I do I did put us cash, total cash. So, yeah, that's okay. There's um, not enough money to pay for it. Sitting and operating at the moment, twice, almost three times. So. Of the water and sewer. Yeah, it's just you're deciding. Let's, let's you're make sure we get the plan done before we start paying them. How about that? All right, we can we can award it, but let's make sure we know how we're going to pay for it. And you know, a thirty-one million dollar loan is, you know, that's that hadn't been done yet, so I wouldn't be counting on that just yet. And we paid off twenty-something million dollars worth of debt in four years. Um, and I don't know where the money's gone, but I mean, and now we're not, we don't have any debt in the city, so we should have some money somewhere. I'm, I'm going to go over a lot more of the budget, but we, you paid off a lot of debt at the expense of letting a bunch of, you know, peop, the full time employees go, not investing in equipment, never taking that second phase step for upgrading our sewer. So, I mean, it's easy to pay down money when you're not spending a dime and letting this, the things kind of go by the wayside. You can thank me for saving it and allowing you to spend it all. Well, what's thanked us for saving it Mayor, is, this is the amount of money we're saving now. This is the council now. meeting. Please. I know it's your meeting. Do we have a resolution? Do we have a uh, motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Thank you. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Thank, Thank you. you. Item number 19 is a resolution to award a bid for perennial ryegrass seed 2019 for sports fields for the rec department to site one landscape supply with a total bid proposal of $17,421. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Is that? Oh, sorry. Somebody tell me if that was budgeted. It was budget. In 2020. But I guess we won't spend it before then. Right? It's not currently budgeted. 
Any other discussion? Hey, you know, I've heard that we're trying to trim a quite a bit out of the budget, and when, now we're already passing things that are in 2020's budget, so we need to be cautious of that. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item number 20 is a resolution to award the bid for pedestrian sidewalks in the Central Business District for the Public Works Department to Kelly's Welding and Excavation Incorporated with a total bid proposal of $533,510. I'll just say before we get started on this, I, I don't see but one bid in this. Um, is that correct? I'm hearing from the City Attorney we need to table this. Can you answer that? Is there only one bid? Yes, we only, uh, and, and uh, we had, unfortunately, one, two, three, four, five, six, no. seven, eight, nine that, that picked up plans and participated in the process, but only one responded, and that was Kelly's uh, welding and excavation. Um, the, the numbers were not far out with the engineering estimate that we covered with y'all back at work session. That's why we advanced it, because this project had some interest from the council. If this is something you would either like to table uh, or reject and us to go and negotiate, see if we can... Uh, uh, do better or if you want us to go out and rebid it again those are all options on the table I don't I don't we I don't, earlier tonight we um, we rejected the proposals in which we only re received one bid that is but correct. We felt like this one was close enough to the estimates that that may not be necessary well and and that's why we wanted to bring it forward and pre uh, present it to you the the other one was well significantly out of what we had budgeted or, or was planning to expand. I was been informed by the city attorney that we could reject the bid and then he could uh, take care of his concerns in the meantime and it, it, it would allow us the opportunity for it to come back before us. So uh, council, what's, what's your pleasure? This is also in the 2020 budget. That is correct. I remember discussing, you know, and, and trying to hone in on that. The this project has kind of three different parts to it. Correct. It's got the LED crosswalk here at Pine Street. Correct. Uh, and then it also, which I I thought we kind of prioritized, but it also has the cobblestone or the paver in the turning lane. That is correct, and that is, uh, as you see, a separate ad alternative. So really the base bid for the, the section street improvements for pedestrian crossings at the Johnson Delamar and at the Pine Street intersections is 428885, and the added alternate to put the new safety strip in on Second Street is an additional 104625, which gets you that 533510. Um, Absolutely, you could choose not to act on the ad alternate and be back at the base bid amount of 428885 Is it is it broken down? I can't, I can't pull up the specific bids. Is it broken down even further by Say the one from the from the police department across Section Street. It is. Okay. It is. Yeah. It's on your. Should be the last page of your yeah, it's handout. Not, it's not downloading for some reason. So I'm just So if to ask your question, I, I believe that the council would be within their, their jurisdiction if they just wanted to do the Pine Street intersection, they would have that plus mobilization, which that is a, that's a fixed cost to mobilize, whether you work in three sites or, or, or just one. The utility adjustments would be 14960 would be project total for that, fa for that uh, combination of, of phase. Yeah. 
Council, I'm, I'm still getting advice from the city attorney that uh, we should table it or reject it to give him time. I'll make a motion to support that. Well, I mean, is there, is there a reference, Marcus? I mean, procedurally? Proceed if you table it, you can come back and then make the changes to the to reject it next time. So you still got that open. Or you could amend it to do the 428 like you know Richard's discussing if you, you want to do that without add-ons. Well, well here, here's my question. Richard, you just presented an option that would that would be, I think you said one hundred and something if we only approved one piece of it. Um, and, and that's why we bid it the way we did, to, to have it in components. Um, and I believe that that was the intent, that, that this could be an a la carte selection. Right. We gave you the whole kit and caboodle, top to bottom, but you have that ability, I believe, to, to you know, that's why the mobilization is a standalone, the utility adjustments, and, and then the two, the, the three project sites, so to speak, are separate numbers that are wholly in, contained. And, so. and I appreciate your foresight and okay. knowing that that might come up and giving us that option um, my question would be is if we do it if we do break it down like that and, and, and make it a singular project where it's we're just doing the one out here first and that's the, the price you quoted do we have to rebid that as a as a as a separate distinct project since this was bid as part of a an overall piece good question I think you would if, you, if you're doing just one crop you talking just doing one crosswalk yeah yeah I mean, I mean, I'm not saying I, that I'm just asking that question. If, if we look at it like that, do we have to bid it as a new, separate, think, distinct I think project? You probably should because if you're doing, because there could be any kind of smaller company that could go in and do it for less money than the new company that's kind of mobilized, like you know, this Kelly's Welding. And if you're giving them an opportunity, each company being fair and on board, that one smaller company may have an opportunity to do less if it's a limited scope project. You know, but if it's an add-on that we've already got in, built into the bid package that you could take out, that's another issue you could do. And, and I, that, but that's that's everybody's on the same page with, with the bid package. And I'll have to, you know, I I, I believe and Chris, you're here. That was our intent to to be able to have this thing compartmentalized. Where and 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 that's how we did advertise it and open those bids. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that was the intent to give you guys a, you know, and 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 again, uh, or if you just want to go back out cleanly with a portion of this, my recommendation is is to reject this bid and authorize us to to re-advertise because there's no really cost to us to do that since we we designed the project in components and can go back and re-advertise it and come back if it's just right now to do the section at Pine, we can do that standalone and and there's a chance we get a better price. Worst case, we get the same exact price again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to extend this any further than it's got to be because I, I think, especially right here, that that's an issue that needs to be addressed sooner rather than later. But I just want to make sure we're doing everything we're supposed to do and doing it in the way we're supposed to do it. So so if the, if the recommendation then is to reject this bid tonight so that we can get the ball rolling and do everything we need to do the right way, then I'll make a motion to reject the bid. Just reject all bids, period. Reject all bids, period. I have a motion to reject all bids. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Jay, I think that's the right move. Yeah, I mean, I, and, I'm, and I'm thinking through this kind of, you know, Richard, I want your feedback, and it sounds like you and Chris kind of planned for this. And so it, it, by rejecting this, we can go out and get, like you said, at worst, since it was kind of compartmentalized already, at worst, get the same price and maybe potentially get it better if we so choose to limit it. Yeah, and and we, we probably could have it back out in the streets by the end of the week. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I just can't you. understand why you had not nine nine bidders. I mean, that's that's amazing. In this in this type of work, it is. It's it's very frustrating because they they show interest, but they're not turning bids, and I I just think that's maybe a signal of how good the economy is out there. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion and a second to reject all bids. Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Thank you, Council. Item 21 is a resolution to award RFP for Program Administration Services Contract for the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources Grant. And you can read that number. The Working Waterfront and Green Space Project to Grant Management, LLC, with a total not to exceed fees of 248000 
the initial award of 37,500 for phase one and 210,500 for phase two, subject to review and approval by ADCNR and city attorney prior to execution. Oh, I guess my first question is I'd like to know which, which team that was. Uh, this is a this is a recommendation by the committee that heard these proposals, I believe. Yeah, this is a pretty easy one. We, we had two functions that we had to fulfill to get to this point. One was an RFP since the grant, which is 100% set the fees for uh, grant administration. We only had one respondent to that request for proposals, and that, of course, was um, <clears throat> Well, my mind just went blank. I'll think of their name here in a minute. Uh, grant Management LLC. And as you know, they're already under contract with the city that, that manages our grants, so, so there was a high comfort level there. So there was, no, there was no competition because only one qualified firm responded to the request for proposals. The fee is not a negotiable fee or anything of that nature. It is set by the, 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 the they, they have a set percentage for grant administration as part of the BP Restore Act. I, I, I actually had this confused with the engineers that were trying to, that you guys listen to the presentations for. This has nothing to do with that. No. Well, it has something to do with it. This this is the group right. that will have to take care of compliance for all of the federal parts of, of this program. <coughs> and they're going to work with our treasurer and they're going to work with, with everybody to make sure all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed. And they will actually take every bit of our stuff and submit it to state lands who will then submit it to treasurer and then get us reimbursed and all that. And it's a, it's a lot of a lot of bureaucracy. I think actually what I was thinking about was what is in resolution the number 22. Yes, sir. What I That's was the next thinking. one. Yes, that was sir. the one that they gave. You had like four presentations for. Or that so. is correct. Or you may have had more, 10, and then narrowed it down. Yes, sir. Okay. That, that's what I was confusing that with, my bad. Okay. Council, I'll entertain a our motion to pass resolution number 21. So moved. Second. Second. Okay. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All right, motion carries. Item 22, to award RFQ for engineering services contract for the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources grant number. You can read that again. Restore Act Working Waterfront and Green Space Project to Goodwin Mills and Kaywood with a total not to exceed uh, fees of 778686 uh, this is the initial award of 496766 for phase one and 281920 for phase two, subject to review and approval by ADC and R and the city attorney prior to execution. That's the one. You want to yes. give us a quick rundown on that, what, how you selected these? And yes, sir. As you recall, it was a long time ago, uh, y'all established a, a project review committee um, that was made up of a council member, the mayor, your utilities operations director your public works director, your planning and zoning director, and economic and community development. We finally got released uh, by the state to put out RFQs back in June, and we received eight responses. Um, and uh, pretty, you know, most of these packets were probably 40 to 60 pages, and, and not only it was personnel, but teams they have assembled, projects and resumes and things of that nature. That committee independently was required to read and review each of those submittals and score them based upon the criteria that was listed in there. Uh, purchasing played such a big role here as they were kind of the, they were the control and the blind study, meaning we turned everything in and they compiled it and came up with a matrix. Uh, the review uh, project team decided that they felt that picking the top half, which was four firms, to make presentations, which we asked to respond relatively quickly, and we gave them approximately 45 minutes, and I know uh, Council President Burrell got to see at least part of a couple of them, uh, and, and I will tell you, uh, it was the toughest thing that I have ever been personally involved with because the, all four that made presentations were just pretty phenomenal. 
and when you look at the numbers in the matrix that you have included in there that when everybody submitted their their rescoring of the actual presentations the difference between one and two is not many not much and not really much difference between one and four but that was uh, w was once purchasing took everybody's responses and plugged them into the matrix. There was a discussion about the outcome. Everybody felt very comfortable with it, and that is the recommendation that the the project committee that you uh, authorized to do this makes to you tonight. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Johnson, uh, Mr. Conyers? Uh, it was a very thorough process. <laughs> a lot of reading involved and a lot of uh, presentations, but. Really, they were all, all four very of them good. Fantastic, and um, and I thought Goodwin Mills Kwood did did a great job. I mean, on both their binder presentation and their um, in person presentation. So. Okay, well, I'll entertain a motion to award the RFQ to uh, Goodwin Mills and Kwood. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Richard, this is covered 100 percent by the Restore Act. 100 percent yes sir okay. any further questions okay hearing none all those in favor please say aye uh, aye opposed say nay okay motion carries thank you council item number 23 is a resolution that certain items are declared surplus and the mayor and city treasurer are authorized to and directed to dispose of the personal property owned by the city of Fair by one of the following methods Receiving bids for such property sold to the highest bidder provided the city council has, shall have the authority to reject all bids when its opinion it deems the bids to be less than adequate consideration for the personal property or two sold for scrap or recycle at the highest offered value and number three disposal via a landfill. I'll entertain a motion for this so, resolution. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Okay, motion carries. Item 24 is a resolution that the mayor and city clerk be, and they hereby are, I'm just reading that off the page, I didn't write that, authorize and direct to execute and attest respectively for and on behalf of the city of Fair Oak a contract by and between the city of Fair Oak and Emerald Coast Utilities Authority in amount of revenue or expense determined by a reference market price index for recyclable commodities on current market rate for a period to begin September 1st, 2019 to expire on September 30th, 2021 for the receipt and process of City of Fair Oak Recyclables as outlined in the contract attached hereto and made a part hereof. Copy of the contract is on file in the office of the City Clerk. Just a reminder, we, we entered in this, this agreement and it was through this uh, September of this year and uh, again they are offering a renewable a renewal. It does have that same sliding scale. We have planned for this in our budget. Um, Unfortunately, we are in a period of time where we're having to pay to recycle. Uh, we're hoping it swings back the other way sometime in the future. But uh, again, until we uh, can come back with a better plan, uh, this is the best uh, option we have to make sure our recyclables are getting the hand of a, in the hands of a responsible uh, commodity broker and, and moving it forward. So this is uh, just a renewal of that agreement uh, and uh, to get us at least a, a plan to go forth in this next budget year. I'm trying to find that cost. Um, roughly, do you, you have that um, as I'm flipping through this real quick? Yeah, and, then, uh, right, and you can give it to me on a, an annual basis if you if you see it quickly. I don't have it in. Uh, well, the, there is an. He put an estimate. Somewhere on the annual basis, we, we've been on a quarterly basis, have been uh, for for nine months of the year about 36,000, and I, I think 48 would probably be worst case uh, at this point in time um, uh, because it is a sliding scale. When the commodities go, the value go up, our price goes down, or, and it could even go to where they're paying us. But right now, we're somewhere around about that $32.50 a ton um, uh, based upon the current co commodity value. And we do have that planned in our disposal fees as part of our uh, sanitation budget. I see it showing thirty-six thousand and fifty dollars for three months. Are we playing the market any? No, that should Are be. Are we able to stockpile any of these and, 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 and save them for a time at which the commodity price would go higher? 
I mean, right now it's it's the it's that mixed stream that we that's hard to stockpile. I mean, we're we're still getting rid of we're selling cardboard and we're selling metals uh, in, as an in entity, but it's the mixed plastic, mixed paper, and things like that that we're we just don't have a market. Okay, so we're selling a mixed stream now. I get I get people ask me all the time: Is our mixed stream winding up in a landfill, or are they truly recycling it? We're truly recycling. We are. Are they? The people we're selling it to. I, the, yes, that is their operational requirement. Now, I, you know, again, I've got to trust that they are, and I don't think they would go through all that sorting and all that bailing and all that they if they weren't. That, if they weren't, you know, I've visited the plant several you times. Just, you hear people ask, and yeah. you know, you sell it to a recycling facility, and then you find out that they're charging you to put it in a landfill. I want to make sure that we're being good stewards of the environment. We're going through a lot of effort. We're running recycling trucks and everything else. And, if we find out that the people we're selling it to as recyclables are charging us and then dumping them in the landfill, well, and I for one, be pretty upset. And I, and I will tell you, I think East Coast Utility Authority is a, an honorable, you know, organization. So I don't think. Well, they I didn't say they're be, doing it to hide it. They yeah. may do it and, and tell you they're doing it. So. Yeah. Well, no, no, they're they're recycling and they're they're bemoaning the cost of uh, how much it costs to recycle right now. And Richard put together a, a response to someone who had asked that, and I want to get it on the website because it was really done well and goes into a lot of detail. I'll make a motion to approve. All right. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank Richard. You. All right, item 25 is an appointment to the Fair Hope Environmental Advisory Board. This would, uh, nominee would be for a four-year term. Uh, they have nominated Amy Paulson for a term ending August 2023. I'll entertain a motion for the appointment. So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Item 26, the request of Amanda Bacon, Fair Hope, which is ride requesting street usage permit for the annual bike ride schedule for Tuesday, October 29th. Uh, you may have heard, Council, it was at one time to 24th, but uh, the mayor uh, has agreed to 29th. Uh, I did speak to Chief Hollinghead, and she was okay with the 29th. I don't think there are any other conflicts. From 6 to 6.30 p.m. and to block School Street between Morphe and Fair Hope Avenue from 5 to 6.30 the Wimp School bike ride benefits local animal rescue and will help animals throughout our area. Uh, I want to make a couple of comments before we vote on this, and I think that we will approve this, is this, this does not uh, uh, provide the police um, service. I believe they will be paying for that separately. That's something that we can't waive. Uh, also, uh, I've had uh, staff expressed that they believe if you look at the notes in the, the book on this that they believe this should be classified a, per, a parade um, the police feel that it should be classified as a parade and I, I think it's far too late to spring that on them now but I think going forward and I and I and I, they have about 800 participants in this and I did speak to um, Shannon Hesse uh, that's involved with this um, today and and say that you know next year you might want to anticipate it might i can't speak for the future but you might want to just start telling people that it may be a classified as a parade and um you know if, they're, if we're closing down the streets and we have barricades up it, it pretty much meets the definition of a parade and so if it costs them two or three dollars more per, per participant to pay for that parade permit i think that's something that you know we need to start thinking of down the road uh, because i think the staff makes pretty good pretty good argument the police make a pretty good argument for that um, so with that I'll entertain a motion request in the street usage so moved second we have a motion and a second any further discussion hearing none all those in favor please say aye aye aye, aye. opposed say nay okay motion carries public participation if you have anything else to bring forth before the council please come forward state your Thank name you, and address sir. for the record I don't believe we're going to take any action after our executive session. Are we? We're not anticipating any action, any resolutions. So if you're going to stick around, I don't. I don't think we're going to be taking any actions after executive session. Anybody want to address the council? Yeah, Richard, Richard Peterson. Um, yes, sir. Richard Johnson made me feel so guilty because most of the 
resolutions on the agenda were for public works and so I prepared something to offer during the work session but time ran out obviously so I, I did want and I won't take I got seven items but I won't take three minutes for each one of them I promise but what I do want to do and I'll go over them real quickly the, the first page is part of the SCADA system on the wastewater plant and if you see the triangle on the far right side that's got the hash marks underneath it those are the flows to the wastewater plant that exceeded 4.6 million gallons a day and if you look at the area under that curve you'll see that it was about 400,833 gallons that if we had been able to store that volume before it got to the plant, we would have been able to maintain a steady flow of 4.6 million gallons a day. The, 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 the three side stream storage vessels that I'm getting bids out today for will hold um, 255,000 gallons if those pump stations that will feed them run continuously I don't think they're going to run continuously but that's just to give you a, 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 an idea of what we're talking about in terms of trying to manage peak flows to the plant and trying to use these vessels to back the water up into the system because of the inflow we get and this was just a two inch rain event by the way but but I can tell you that the, that the Grand Hotel lift station came on about 830 this morning with two pumps running and ran that way for quite a while and we're still part five of that initial evaluation was to evaluate the Grand Hotel wastewater system and then we're still looking at that so uh, I just want I want you to be aware of that the second item that, that's in there and they're all stapled independently as you go through and you don't have I'll, I'll just touch uh, hit the high points and then y'all can go about your executive session the second uh, item is the RSA agreement for the property that they're willing to give us and, and Marcus has looked at that and I think all of y'all have seen that I think uh, I sent a, the mayor an email about it and, and she forwarded it to everybody but, but I, I, we need to act on that I think pretty quick I don't know how to go about getting that done but I, but I would like to see that it can move and, and if we need to do anything to, to tweak it or anything like that I'm willing you know I'm more than willing to do what we can and, and part of and then the next thing you'll see is a transfer of maintenance agreement that I'm that I'm preparing for the for the battles trace or, or battles place I get those two confused the apartments on the east side of County Road 3 or Section Street at, at Old Battles Road uh, that that project was put in and, and but before we were able to work with the with the wastewater system there you know we, we uh, what I'd like to be able to do is start having easements and, and being able to take over operation and maintenance of any part of a wastewater system that serves more than one customer because you can't have one customer depending on another customer that may cause problems to their line at least I don't think we should and so part of the if we could have worked with that developer early on and this was before I was here we, we may have been able to get an easement for that extension to go further north and up the hill further and, and serve more property and minimize lift stations which is one of our goals eventually to try to get to that point but but this agreement is a transfer of maintenance and operation of the lift station to us from them and then there's an easement document behind that that goes with that uh, what you, you will find that uh, when we bid the uh, the the transmission line the the engineering agreement we had and, and Richard Johnson and I worked to try to get all the consultings uh, or the consultants on a level playing field so that we base fees on construction cost and not what people would give us as a fee so we have a way to judge that and, and the, the, the Dewberry fee in their contract was based on percentages and and when the bids came in above the estimated cost that the contract was based on the you know their fee goes up with that and and we're, we're going to ask that we increase that fee to allow for the, the provisions in the contract and and what we're using for professional services agreements and and and, and this other document kind of explains all of that 
and and since we are doing the uh, first phase of that transmission project the next do document would be a, a proposal from Dewberry to do the, the the next phase going out which will be to connect to that force main system we put in at Ingleside and Fair Avenue and we'll extend that across Greeno Road we'll go up to Bishop Road where the intermediate school lift station is we'll go along Bishop Road to Gaper Extension and take Gaper Extension to 13 run 13 north to 104 and then come in just on the west side of where North Hills is going in so we can start collecting all of that wastewater from the high school we're working with the apartment complex potentially on the corner of Lawrence Road and 104 we're, we're working potentially I say potentially because there, there is a comp competing sewer system out there and then you know I'm not taking away their business and I'm not I'm not I'm just promoting our business and if we're able to have those uh, connections will we'll have them we, you know I, I think we're in, in a pretty good condition to get those but I don't know that but anyway we're going to try to extend that around to start to look at uh, how to bypass some of these other lift stations that are along the way where the sewer continues to leapfrog from one station to the other and and then uh, I also have a uh, an email that, that I sent to everybody about the, the airport and the, uh, the the potential for a decentralized sewer system out there I, I, I need to get back to that developer and I need to uh, try to determine if that's feasible I know that there's talk about a, a full-fledged treatment plant out there uh, I know if we do that there'll be uh, uh, you know we'll be piping effluent to perhaps the bay uh, I would and I'll be happy to get some other expertise on decentralized sewer systems if we need to but my opinion is if, if we can can lower the scale of, of these treatment plants and, and be able to put the, the effluent in the ground uh, long term will be supplementing groundwater which I think is you know going to be critical to base flows in coastal streams maybe Fish River and uh, you know we won't be putting the nutrients right in the bay and you know how you see the the, the, the the oxygen depletion zones that come out of these mouths of different rivers and uh, you know I don't know that we're contributing that greatly to that but but I, but I think if we can pocket different locations where we have permeable soils and can go to decentralized systems I think we'll, we'll not have to do as much transmission work as we're doing now because our system stretches out so far and I think it's the right thing to do plus I don't know what the airport authority they're already developing a lot of that east side of the runway so I don't know what their goal is with all of that and what their long-term goals are with the property out there but uh, I, I do need to get back to the developer and let him know the other option I think is going to be to run a force main all the way up 13 and and that force main will turn at Twin Beach and then that'll start looking at well we probably need to put one of these side stream storage vessels there so that we can manage all that flow that develops on Twin Beach and you know including Fairfield and everything that currently goes to the, the east of the Sun which is a lift station that's in pretty bad shape that, that we need to do some structural work on but we, we'd like to bypass that and connect it to the same force main that we just approved tonight as you know bypassing all of the older infrastructure that's currently serving that part of the wastewater system so if we can talk about that I'd appreciate and, and Councilman Brown has, has said he doesn't have a problem with it I, I mean I, and I don't want to you know do this without uh, you know a public discussion if that's what it takes but at the same time uh, you know the you know time is money to these people and, and if they're going to get a contract on the property they want to be able to know fairly quickly you know what what options they have and what their cost will be as they start doing the, the purchase of that price it's 250 units on what would be the north west corner of 13 and 32 is the, is the land that they want to develop so that's and, and then the last thing I, I sent a personal letter to the mayor regarding some issues with my offer for employment and and you know and I I've been trying to be patient about it but you know there, there comes a point when I would like to know you know maybe some 
response, written response would be nice for me, you know, what, how the council feels about that. And that's all I got. Thank you. I do want to add to that, since it's on the record, that I have done everything I can to get a meeting and discuss this and have been denied. So I am with you and share your concerns and would like to have a decision. Thank you. Anyone else for public participation? Okay. Uh, I'll close public participation and I will find my resolution here. I'll read a letter. Uh, from City Attorney Marcus McDowell, it says, as City Attorney Marcus McDowell, I hereby request the Fairup City Council go into executive session based on the Alabama Code. You can read there. To discuss the consideration the city is willing to offer except when considering the purchase, sale, exchange, lease, or market value of real property. The discussions could have a detrimental effect upon the competitive position of the city in the negotiations if the matter was discussed in public. City Attorney McDowell does hereby declare that the City Council of the City of Fair Hope rise from regular City Council meeting on Monday, August 26, 2019 to go into executive session. The City Council shall be in executive session for approximately one minutes. At the time, at the end of the executive session, the City Council shall return to the City Council Chambers to resume the regular City Council meeting. And I said I do not anticipate uh, any further actions to be taken up by the council after this executive session. The time is 7.52. City Council exits the di dias to go into executive session. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you.